When I was 20, I was a volunteer mentor with the youth group of a local church, not an Episcopal church. I hadn't found my way here yet. Among other things, I led a weekly evening prayer service. As is fairly typical, I was questioning a lot of things about my faith and religion, and I was straining against the language and imagery I had been raised with. I felt a deep pull for something more, a pretty desperate longing for other ways of naming God, other ways of defining my relationship with God than the patriarchal and hierarchical ways I had known. So one week, at one of these prayer services, I included a prayer that named God our Father and Mother. It was a crumb, really. The tiniest imaginable step toward broadening our understanding of the divine. Afterward, in the parking lot, another of the adult mentors stopped me and the youth minister to address this breach. The use of mother was inappropriate. I had checked in with a deacon ahead of time, had gotten proper approval for this mildest of expansive language, but that didn't really matter because this guy was upset. And it felt to me like he had the weight of many centuries of tradition on his side, naming God only as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I sobbed. I mean, I stood there in that parking lot, crying the kind of ugly cry where you can barely breathe, let alone speak. I felt embarrassed and ashamed about my reaction for a long time, until I finally realized that I wasn't just failing at being able to calmly have a rational conversation about our use of language in prayer. No, my, my spirit was crying out to know God more fully, and that was a holy thing. God was inviting me to new and deeper levels of connection with her, and that was a gift. Imagine my delight when, several years ago, I discovered that the framers of the Revised Common Lectionary offer us this lesson from Proverbs on Trinity Sunday. I love it. I mean, I absolutely adore this reading. Did you catch it? In it, wisdom, personified as a woman, calls out, and her cry is to all that live. She invites us to understand that she was brought forth, some translations say, begotten, before all creation. In the beginning, she was with God, alongside God as a master worker, delighting in creation. In the next chapter of Proverbs, wisdom sets a table and invites all to eat the food she has prepared and drink the wine she has mixed. If this all sounds a little familiar, many theologians argue that's intentional. Roman Catholic feminist theologian Elizabeth Johnson traces the multitude of ways that biblical authors drew on wisdom literature in writing about their experience of the person of Jesus of Nazareth. Paul identifies Christ crucified 
as the wisdom of God. That same divine wisdom active in the creating and saving ordering of the world is present in a definitive way in Jesus, she says. The writer of the Gospel of Matthew records as sayings of Jesus statements that first appeared as sayings of wisdom. He utters wisdom's call, promises her life-giving rest, and claims her yoke as his own. The writer of the Gospel of John employs wisdom, vocabulary, and imagery, presenting the prehistory of Jesus as the story of personified wisdom. And the parallels go on and on. Now, I don't know what the framers of the lectionary, the group who decided which readings will happen on which Sunday, were thinking. But to me, the gift here is an invitation to experience even the most foundational doctrine, the doctrine of the Trinity, in new and life-giving ways. It turns out that the weight of Christian tradition is, in fact, rather expansive in terms of language for God. Biblical authors and saints and mystics have understood both who God is and their relationship with the divine in a wide array of images and with a whole host of mixed gender-bending language. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is a beautiful way of naming the relationship among God's own being, that the nature of God is self-giving, mutually reciprocal love. And there are others. Mother, wisdom, spirit. Parent, sibling, friend. The author, the word, the breath of God. From St. Augustine, lover, beloved, the love between them. My Lakota classmate taught me grandfather, mother, great spirit. The New Zealand prayer book prays earth maker, pain bearer, life giver. The Lutheran book of worship offers the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Ecological theologian Sally McFaig suggests that our notion of the Trinity helps shape our understanding of our beginnings from God, our salvation in God, and our movement toward God. Womanist theologian Karen Baker Fletcher describes the Trinity as three relations or movements, a community, in an ongoing dynamic dance. Our reading from Proverbs tells us that it is a delight to be swept up with the Trinity in this dance. A joy to be invited into divine community. Alongside wisdom, we are invited to rejoice in the created world, to delight in the human race, and to rejoice before God. It was a painful period of my life, realizing that the people who had taught me about God were trying to limit, control, and correct my experience of God. Not intentionally. I trust now that they meant well, but my spirituality didn't fit in boxes they understood. My gasping sobs were an outward expression 
of feeling spiritually bereft. I didn't know where to find God or what to call God. I only knew that there must be more. For me, it was a challenging process. Having only been given a small handful of images and words for God, I didn't know what language to use that would both be true and feel delightful in my spirit. Through mentors and new communities, God has invited me to use a variety of names and pronouns for them in a relationship that continues to evolve. What I need, what I believe God offers, is a breadth, a wideness, a freedom to understand God's own self and our relationship with divine community. It wasn't until I broke out of the spiritual constraints that were put around my prayers that I could be opened up to God's movement. On the other side of a rigid, fixed image of God, I found so much life. It wasn't instantaneous, of course, but I found new loving communities, a spiritual home, work that I feel called to give my life to. The nurturing provider, the incarnate wisdom, the fierce blowing spirit dance around in so much joy. They delight in the created world, delight in humanity, and they invite us to join in. The doctrine of the Trinity is not meant to be restrictive, friends. If what you have so far been taught feels stifling, or the language you are accustomed to feels limiting, I invite you to follow the delight of wisdom. What new images, what different names might make your heart rejoice? Follow them. Try them out. The nature of God as three in one is a self-revelation of the God of love, whose very essence is a community to which we belong. You your whole self, all your spiritual longings are welcome and celebrated in that community. God delights in you. May you come to delight in God. <laughs>